going to be turning to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I'll be honest with you, I have wrestled for days. You know, battle isn't always pretty. Spiritual or otherwise. I've had, at the time, I, I thought I was punishment from my parents for taking me to live in Europe. But there's so much that I glean from having lived there. See, you go back in the 1935 through 45 and you go look at Europe back then and it was gray and it was beat up and it was ugly and there was death and there was battle everywhere. I was picked up and dropped off in the middle of Normandy in France and got to see Europe after the battle. I walked the manicured walkways with the grass. Hills and hills of white, as pristine white headstones from the fallen. I literally walked down into gun turret areas. Brother Lawrence, they were as immaculate as any hallway in your home. But battle doesn't really look like that. That's after the battle. We are, we're going to have to contend for the faith. We're going to still have to strive to enter. Are you hearing me? Never let Satan or his ideas hit you right along in your life. We've got to allow the word of God, the spirit of God, the preaching of the word, the church, the church people to have an impact on us. I need to be surrounded by godly people. I need godly influence and godly teaching. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, and I got a lot of scriptures I'm going to go through this morning. Again, you can follow again on the YouVersion app and... Uh, or you can just get in your Bible. I am reading from the King James, King James Version mostly. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, shucks. How many found that that's really not as easy as it reads? Galatians 2 and 20. Writing to Galatians, Paul makes a statement. I am crucified with Christ. Anybody ever heard that before? Anybody notice the difference between your crucifixion and his? <laughs> Paul says, nevertheless, I live. Did anybody notice the difference between the sacrifice in the Old Testament and this? When you put something on the altar in the Old Testament, it never got up and left. See, the problem with us as we say we lay stuff on the altar, but as soon as things get sticky, we crawl back off. Well, now you're asking too much, Pastor. We like, we like that silent Jesus on the cross. Man, I don't know about you. It may take a little bit more work, but I like the resurrected Christ we just celebrated at Easter. Nobody likes the dying part. We all like the arising part, but you don't get the arising without the dying. That's what he's talking about. I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. The paradox of Christianity is that we don't actually physically die on the altar of giving ourselves to God. So saying crucified with Christ is somewhat confusing.
What is a Christian? What does it take to be one? What does it take to really be saved? How do you get to that place you got confidence in Christ? We get a lot of confidence and arrogance in ourselves, so much so that there'll be a lot of people that are going to realize how costly that's been, but too late. I want to talk for a few moments today. And I need you to listen carefully and don't, don't misconstrue my words. Don't surrender yourself to the enemy. Strengthen yourself in God. You can lay your Bibles down. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Jesus, we need you, Lord. We recognize Easter. We celebrated Easter. We recognize the crucifixion, the death, and the burial. Lord, we struggle with that in our own personal lives, and we need help today. Lord, I'm but clay, I'm but dust, and I am completely incapable of, of bringing this forth without your help. I'm, I'm flesh and blood. I'm imperfect, and I need your help today. Help each and every one of us to truly find ourselves walking and talking with the resurrected Jesus. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. Paul explains in Romans chapter 12, and he begins at verse 1. He says, I beseech you, therefore, beseech is a pleading. Any parent ever pleaded with a dumb teenager? Any dumb teenager remember your parent pleading with you? We're on the same subject again. Brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your, present yourself a living sacrifice. We like the living, but that sacrifice part. What? I like that Jesus that don't cost me nothing. I like that Jesus that lets me live how I want to live. You know, I get to thinking about that. And everybody's so thankful for the uh, fact that when that lady was caught in adultery, completely surrounded, completely guilty, well, Jesus let her go. No, he didn't. He said, go and sin no more. What do you, you know, can I say that in one word? Change. Change, or the next time I might not be there to help you. A, your body's a living sacrifice. Then there's another word there, and, and people today don't want to talk about this word. Are you being legalistic? No, I'm not. It's in the word. This is a legal document. If you want the benefits of the Bible, you got to read the whole Bible. Mm. Holy, not your holiness standards, his. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Acceptable unto anybody. Who? So whose standards? We, the most say this, we got a bunch of lying preachers. God don't care about, are you lying? Why did he tell the adulterous woman to stop? Why did he tell the rich young ruler, give all that you have and, God ain't going to ask that. What are you telling God what he's going to ask what he's not? That's right. Brother Carl, I'm not feeling too good right now. Well, trust me, you're going to feel a whole lot better after. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nobody likes to work out, but you like to look after. Holy. Except on the God, which is your reason. Are you ready? That's kindergarten level. Isn't it time some graduated out of kindergarten? Especially if you want to preach to people. Especially if you want. And all the saints that just want a good, a good, honest preacher behind a pulpit said amen. Don't require of us what you don't require in your own home. 
or in your own life. Don't require us so you don't call, call, ask your own children to do. And Eric ought to say amen. Chris would be here a long day if I repeat everything. <laughs> but I, li I, I like to hear it, brother. What is holy? And I'm not talking about them new jeans you paid way too much money for. Holy is sacred, physically pure, morally blameless. There's another word, and it's not a bad word, even though people, religious. You hear people all the time, religion's in the Bible. People are, well, oh, man, that's your religiosity. No, it's not. I'm trying to be accepted by God. I'm imperfect. He, he, if it wasn't for his blood, there's no way I'd make it. But I'm not going to turn around and recognize what he's done for me and walk away and act, well, keep dying on the cross, Jesus. No, I want a resurrected Savior. That means I got me. Ceremonially consecrated. It's what God accepts. You know, I got to thinking about this, and I used this analogy before. Anybody seen some of the rocks that we got out, outside? And you ever seen those rocks? You know why they can just sit out there like that and just big whoop? It's a rock. Nobody cares. And you're a rock, no big deal. If you want a rock, just go out and grab one, right? You can find a rock anywhere. But what if we talk about another kind of rock? Come on, girls. Hope diamond-sized rock? You're going to handle that differently. You know why you don't see a bunch of Hope Diamonds out there lying in, our, 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 in front of our church? You know why you don't see They are. Look at all those wonderful words. They have value. Extreme value. The owner has that thing on a pedestal to be viewed, but not that. That's the difference between being a child of God and a child of the world. Someone that's living for God, uh, 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 you just can't do anything with me. I belong. I'm his. We can't treat the things of God or even ourselves roughly. There ain't a decent girl on this planet, lady on this planet, that's going to allow someone she's not married to touch her because the Bible says that's impure, that's fornication. You have to be in covenant. Covenant is an agreement. It's ownership. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just see Carl's telling her, hey, I'm going out with some guys tonight. Who are you going out with? I ain't telling you. Oh, yes, you are. Why? Um, <laughs> he wouldn't make it out of the house. Why? He belongs to her. Why? There's a covenant. How many want to be in covenant with Jesus? Are you sure now? Being in covenant with Jesus is a whole lot more than a bumper sticker on your car and a gold chain with a cross around your neck. When I walked into church, I thought I was a Christian. I had a chain around my neck with Jesus on it. The guy who wanted me to the Lord reached over in prayer, didn't care about offending me, took that chain off, said, put that in your pocket. And instead of having Jesus right in your neck, get him in your heart. Get him in your life. Get that bumper sticker off your car. Hello? Quit putting pictures of Jesus on the wall and get him in your heart. Because when he's in your heart, like a marriage, like, it changes where you go. It changes what you do. It changes who touches you. Wait, 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 listen. How many came in here, Jesus, I want you to touch me today? Can I tell you something? If you're not his, he, he might be like, well. <laughs> I don't know if I'm here. He, I don't know if I want to touch that. When you think about the depth of that, it's kind of painful. When you think about the honesty of the reality of your history, 
No one's jumping up and down. I'm the hope diamond. I'm the hope diamond. God. They're just another rock. Off the dirt. Oh, Jesus, save me. Wash me. See, when the, when the Hope Diamond was originally found and dug out of the earth, it didn't look too good. But see, it got in the hands of a master craftsman. And they looked at it and they surveyed it and they analyzed it and they cut it perfectly. That's what the Lord wants to do with you and I. That, that's church. That's pastoral authority. That's time spent. That's protection and we just don't let anybody's hands on it. Only proven master craft. What God's doing with our lives. Amen. It's a song we sing, no one can touch you like Jesus can. It's true. And all that being said, now that I've ground us all down to rocks, I'm hoping to give us something to help us wait a minute. Because a lot of times, we make a bed that we have to lie in. We are the masters of our messes. But what we really need is the master of miracles. I'm going to go to Genesis chapter 48. And I'm going to read two verses. And I, I really don't know how much longer, how long I'm going to go on this. I really don't know. If you really get with me and get this and spiritually something happens, maybe someone gets the Holy Ghost, someone runs to the, I don't know, I'll stop. Are you hear what I'm saying? I, I really just, as soon as someone gets this, I'm, I'm done. I don't want See, I am a product of my environment. Sometimes I'm curt and I'm short. There's a saying, and well, the price didn't beat around the bush with you. He cut it down the hand to tell you tell you what the problem is. How many don't raise your hand? How many like that? See, I you know I do. You know why? I'm not as smart as you guys. I, I'm kind of dumb. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm thick-headed. My, my, my dad had to use saying, it's like, you know, Steve, it's better to be thought of a fool than open your mouth and remove all doubt. In other words, he told me, shut up. Yeah. I just was not the sharpest tool in the drawer or the shit. And I needed it plainly said to me. That's why the guy that won me, Lord, could reach over and just yank whatever I was listening to in my car, yank it out and put it in. Because, oh, I was too stupid to realize I needed someone to help lead me in the things of God because I didn't realize what I would allow would damage me. Where I would go, who I would hang out with, would stop and halt the work of God in my heart and my life. They were damaging to me because I didn't realize they were influencing me. So I just kind of needed someone to be plain with me. So I'm kind of plain. I don't like to be confused by, what did he mean by that? I, can you just put a wet paint sign on it? I won't touch it. Well, Anybody else touch the stove when it was red? Okay, I got I got some short bus folks in here with me today. Praise God, Hallelujah! <laughs> I, 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 look, some of you, man, brother Pearl. Because yeah, I get I can bring it now, and I can and I study and all that now. But I didn't naturally come like that. I needed to be assembled. <laughs> When, 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 when the Lord dropped me off in the church and they opened the box, oh, my God, quite a bit of assembly required. Yes. <laughs> well, I was a mess. I wasn't like, I didn't come walking in looking all like you, but I had work to be done. And you know what? He's still working on me. 
So let me get into this verse. Are you there? Are you with me? Amen. Let's, let's, if you get with me, this will be painless. And it came to pass after these things that, that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick, and he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. So he grabs the future. The grandsons, because he was going to go see the grandfather, dad. And when, if you read part of the story, Jacob, Jacob's ready to die. He's old, he's sick, he's well out. He's just done a mess of junk in his life. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up on the bed. You know, to really grasp, to truly grasp the full potential of this tent, we need to understand a little bit of Jacob's life. In Genesis 32, verse 24 says, And Jacob was left alone. I just want you to think about what you do when you're alone. Maybe what you've done in the past while you were alone. And there wrestled with a man, a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his high and thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Now that means something. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. How many knows what the word, the name Jacob means? Okay. What, what's it mean? No. Thank you. Deceiver. You're ahead of me. You did that last Wednesday too. Stop that. We got a close search. It's okay. It means deceiver. Supplanter to be specific. Can I, can I bring something? Liar. Deceiver. Real slick with his words. You could never really pin him down because he's always got something else to say or an excuse or he's real slick at getting out of what he's guilty of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Y'all need to hear what I'm saying today. Hear what thus saith the Lord. Are you hearing me? But thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. Jacob asked him and said, tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it thou ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of that place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. This is an, a, a, a life-changing experience for Jacob. It's an important moment, a crossroads, an intersection. On the good side, the exciting side, it's, it shows us that despite some of the glaring and obvious character flaws of Jacob's past, that God was trying to select him out for a purpose. And it took that night to see that, okay, Jacob was willing to wrestle really with himself. It shows that God does look for certain types of people. But that type of person still needs to live the right type of life. See, because your ability to wrestle sometimes is, is, is stubbornness to the things of God instead of stubbornness in the things of God. Are you hearing me? Like the lady with the unjust judge that would, wouldn't stop knocking on the door till she got what she needed. We see that in, in, in people that just refuse to stop praying, that keep believing God, that then, okay, God, I'm not gonna stop talking to you till I hear from you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see that with a man that's murdering Christian is so tenacious about his belief. God said, you know what? 
You give me someone who can believe like that, put them in the truth, and they'll wreak havoc on the enemy. That's why Paul wrote so many books of, of the New Testament. He was tenacious. Yes, God wants stubborn people. Yes, God wants tenacious people. Yes, God is looking for people willing to fight, but in the right things of God, and not in their own way. So he knew that Jacob had the right spirit. He was willing to fight long and hard into the night. He was willing to continue to struggle even when winning didn't seem possible. He possessed a tenacity that refused to quit. But in order for Jacob to be successful, he had to stop being Jacob. People say, well, Jesus loves me, yeah. But he's not gonna, he's not gonna go against his word. You, you can't turn around and I know where I'm at with God and this and I'm that. And you know what? That that's a slippery slope. You if you're not in the word and you're not obeying the word, and you're no matter how you feel, and facts don't care about your feelings. So he's wanting Jacob to step into a new life and separate it from his past. But the only way to do that is a name change. Ah, oh, in other words, you gotta stop being a liar, a conniver. You gotta stop being a deceiver. You gotta come out in the open with God and be honest. And I'll change your future. You're not gonna be Jacob, you're gonna be Israel. No longer a liar, no longer a supplanter, no longer a deceiver. I don't care how slick you talk. God wants truth where? It's easy to put a suit on, carry a Bible. And anybody can have some kind of talent and charisma to get behind a pulpit and make a crowd happy. God doesn't want crowds happy. He wants them saved. He's not looking for happiness. He's looking for humility. Let me say something, kids, young people. Don't be in such a relationship with your parents. They can't tell you the truth. They're so worried about your happiness that they no one care about your humility and being right with God. I remember hearing a story years ago about a man that ended up in prison, life in prison. I thought, no, wait a minute. I think he was on death row. And he was allowed one last visit through the bars with his mom. She went to kiss him through the bars, and instead of kissing her, he reached up with his mouth, grabbed the end of her nose, and bit it off. He turned and screamed at her, if you would have disciplined me and straightened me out when I was young, I wouldn't be in here now. Every now and then, we need to understand we need some discipline. We need the Lord. The Bible says the Lord loveth whom he chasteneth and chasteneth him. You ain't loving that child by not telling them the truth. You're setting them up for failure. You're giving them the ultimate Achilles heel into hell. Every now and then we need to be sat down and say, wait a minute now. Okay? So what was going on here is God is saying, I want to distance you from Jacob and make you Israel. No longer Jacob, but Israel. In other words, God prevails. Not Jacob prevails. See, some of you are like, well, let me get my ministry and let me do my thing. And let me, let me tell you something. You better get in the church and get involved in the churches and the kingdom's ministry. You don't find anywhere in there where God's talking about your ministry. You won't find it. He's talking about the church. And if whatever you have is outside the church, it's probably outside of God too. If you're not submitted to somebody, you're not submitted to God. So he's wanting to put behind him the name and reputation of a scoundrel. This moment mirrors an experience that every one of us can have and must experience. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, the very first thing that Peter tells everyone to do is what? Nobody wants to say sorry. Remorse and repent are not the same things. Being sorry you messed up ain't the same as repenting from messing up. Yes. 
Being sorry you got caught is different than repenting. When you're really sorry, there will be fruit meat for repentance. There will be fruit of repentance. You'll be in the altar. You'll be weeping. There'll be something about you when you get into the presence of God in the church. You can't help but lift your hands and worship God. You can't. You, yeah, no other distraction matters. I'm thankful that he's forgiving me. Repentance is beautiful, remorseful, deceptive. Remorse has its place, but it's not repentance. And be baptized, everyone even see, see, see. Do you have that slide ready, brother? The one from last week? I know Easter is over with, but I'm still going to grab it. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift. I'm going to show you how this mirrors the death, burial, resurrection of Easter. See, you just can't repent. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for a slide, brother. I'm going to have to push on you a little bit here. Let's get that up. I said have it ready. There we go. See, Easter ain't just all about Easter eggs and bunny rabbits and good times and fellowship and food. There's something serious about this. Oh, man, this is Sunday morning. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help somebody for the rest of your life, not just make you feel good for a few minutes today and a day in your life. You have to understand Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and rose again. Repentance. My old self's got to die. Baptism is buried. You got to get that old man in the ground. Those old ways, those old things, those ways to think that. Go ahead and say it. It's easier said than done, but let's be honest. The reason some of you are still struggling today when you've been trying to live for God for years is because a lot of stuff crawling off that altar. You're too busy being the old you instead of the new you. Because, you know, I don't need to repent. I did that years ago. Boy, you better repent every day. Paul said, I die every now and then. I die every now and then. I die on Sundays. <laughs> Wednesday night. I die every time Pastor gets on this subject. <laughs> I die every time my parents drag my carcass to church. See, some of you are on drugs. Oh, yeah. Drug to church, drug to the altar. <laughs> mm -hmm. If you're walking in newness of life, you're not afraid of it. Are you hearing? So you've got to be buried. You've got the old man's got to die. Jacob's got to go in the ground. Steve had to go in the ground. Joe's got to go in the ground. Come on, you got to go in the ground. I don't care if your name's Carl, Corey. It doesn't matter. Every one of the old me needs to get in the ground. Or you're going to wake up and everything will be gone that you could have been in God because you let the old man come up and strangle it and drag it back instead of being Israel. Power with God, prince with God. You can't be a prince in the royal household of God and running around in the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So how am I going to get this happen? I need the Spirit of God to lead and guide me. You know, I need the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something right here and right now. You will never be able to walk properly with God without the Holy Ghost. How many remembers the veil being rent? You know why that was? It's signifying the releasing of the Spirit of God for anybody yes. that wants to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name to receive. It wasn't just for one priest at one time to walk in by. It became open to everybody. 
So, so you have to understand, you have to get it the way God wants you to get it so that you can do it the way God wants you to do it. My God in heaven, hallelujah. For this promise is unto you and to your children. See, now we're getting back into the correlation of Joseph, Jacob, Ephraim, and Manasseh. It gets passed down. Hey, parents, how you live is going to affect your children. And it will even affect your grandchildren. If you think it's more important to hand them the life of Jacob than the life of Israel, don't get mad if your kids ain't got it. Oh, you, oh I'm going to bless them. They're going to make it easy for them to live in the flesh. But it's difficult as H-E double hockey stick in the spirit. Man, I got such a better relationship with my kids than they do. Really? I think the most important is my kids have a relationship with God. And the last thing I want to do is lie to them and make them feel like, because you're okay with me, you're okay with God. That's not necessarily true. If that were true, then we wouldn't have these instances in the Word of God that Jesus is trying to save us and set captives free. Because I don't care. I'm not getting into heaven on Daddy's coattail. I'm not going to get into heaven on pastor's coattail. I'm not going to get, you ain't getting into heaven on daddy or mama's coattail. You ain't going to get into heaven on what you did last year. You're going to get to heaven on what you're doing right now. And those people that believe once saved, always saved, really? So if Charles Manson got baptized, turned of his sin back into his tent, he's in heaven now? Got to have a double standard, don't we? It's not true. Once saved, always saved. Ah, oh, that ain't true. Otherwise, why would the Bible say, let someone steal your crown? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a old, 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 old things are passed away. Behold, all things are. How many gets excited when someone brings up your past? Bunch of lying dogs. Nobody likes your past. If you like your past, then you're probably not walking with Jesus. Uh-huh. Keep that door closed and keep the skeletons in there. Come on. That's under the blood. We're, we're, we're quick to say, oh, that's the old me. Anybody ever said, oh, wait a minute. That's the old me. <laughs> that's the old. Huh? Well. How old? Last week? Old ways die slowly sometimes. Sometimes they never. We act like we got it subdued, but deep down, God can't ask for that. Old nature kind of cleans this a bit. Say the wrong thing to someone. Watch it. Uh -huh. That's how addictions persist. Cravings that kill us. Habits that hold us down. Old ways that suck the life out of new efforts. And pretty soon it gets too hard to say no to self. We relinquish and we justify it. Let me say something. God doesn't look at our government to judge this country. He's not looking at the school system. He's looking at the church. He's looking at the Christians. This was all going on because so many people have stopped preaching the truth and they just preach what your teachers having engineered. They don't have to preach the truth anymore. People are pouring millions of dollars in the churches. You don't even know that guy. He's driving in Bentleys and flying in airplanes, and you're, you're sending all your hard earned money to a guy. He don't even know. He can't look you in the eye and know, hey, man, how you feeling today? You can't call him. Anybody here call me this week? If you call me this week, raise your hand. You call me. You call me. You call me. Yeah, brother, brother. Yeah. How many text me this week? That's just about everybody. You know why? How can... How can I not be approachable or reachable and be a shepherd? Don't buy into this world system of, of Christianity. It's false. It's fake. It's not real. 
And I get it. You listen to all these people on YouTube and all these people on Facebook and all these. Wait a minute. That guy ain't praying for you. That person don't care about you. At the end of service, all he does is go and look at the bottom line. How do we do today? Instead of looking at your life, how are you doing today? How many want an, only, an online doctor that never sees you? An online mechanic? <laughs> Get your hand off that card, Carl. <laughs> Listen, we need the church, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, a man of God, the church of the people of God. The Bible says iron sharpened at iron. You know what it's saying? We need to provoke one another to good works. Hey, if you're slacking, you need someone to look. Hey, we don't go there. You watch that, you shouldn't watch stuff like that. You're judging me. Yes. Yes, I'm judging. The Bible says judge ye a righteous judgment. Why? Because if we don't judge it now, you're going to be judged later and go to hell. Oh, my God, Pastor. You're supposed to make everybody feel good all the time. No, I'm not. Drugs do that. I'm not a drug. That's a false reality. That's a lie. Sometimes it's those old habits, those old natures, those sinister habits of hell that hinder our hope of heaven. How many want heaven but know you've got some habits? We lack the discipline to destroy those devil's devices in our lives. Our old ways kind of override the influence of God. That's why on a Friday night, you're like, oh, my, you're struggling with something. You ain't struggling with it sitting in here today, are you? Isn't it funny how it matters who you're around, where you are? Yeah. What the psalmist said, Psalm 73, oh, until I went to the house of God, then understood I their end. Hey, you know why they're, they're living like that? They're not thinking about the end. I'm thinking about the end. I'm thinking about the end. I'm thinking about my whole life, not just today. It's funny. You ever been around people? They blame everybody. They blame everybody attacking them. They blame everything but themselves about the problems they get into. Guess what? That You're not fixing a problem. You're creating another one. Because the Bible says in James, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own, thank you, own lust, thank you, brother, and enticed. They're enticing on purpose. We don't like to talk about this stuff. Okay, I'm working on this car. And I, you know what? This dad poor made a car. She texted me, you know, by the time you figure out what color you want this car, you ain't got enough left to do. And, and, and the, the, the context really is the problem with all the other enticing colors. <laughs> all the different variations, all the, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. Ain't the dumb thing black. Get it out of my hair. And I don't give a rip right now. I'm kind of tired of the dumb thing. Let's just get it. Let's just drive the dumb thing. Or I don't care if it's gray. Right? And I see it, the problem is today because religions made everything okay. You're enticed. Every, you can't go around the corner. You throw a dollar in a bucket and you hope God's okay with that because you really don't want to pay your tithes. There's so many other things to take your money. You don't want to keep up with Jesus. The Jones has got you running like mad. I don't want to be in charge. I'm not coming tonight. I got other things to do. See, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away with his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. But the problem is there's no coming back from that one without Jesus. The devil or anyone else didn't make you do it. It's what you wanted. Tell the truth. Stop blaming people for what you're facing right now. Stop it. Take ownership. Don't get remorseful. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Follow after God. 
And let me lay something else on you. God ain't going to remove the addiction off of you. He's not looking to remove the addiction. He's looking for you to get some discipline. That's how you become a disciple. He's not going to remove your will. He's not going to take away your power of choice. Why did you talk about the car? Because I just want you and David to take away my power of choice. Paint it black. Don't ask me again what color. Right? I just, I've got so many other things that are important that I don't want it in my mind. I don't want. You know why they put blinders on horses when they're racing? Nah, y'all, that's too simple. You're right, but it's not. They're kind of like me. They're dumb. I can't handle distractions. I got a race to run, and I need help to stay focused on the race. Mm-hmm. Just got to stay focused. I can't. Squirrel. <laughs> That's funny because it's true. Do you know why things are more expensive at 7-Eleven and QT than the grocery store? Because it's convenient and you are too dumb to buy it when you get it cheap and you're living in a reckless manner. You're spinning your gears. You're all over the place. And well, let's gotta, I, I got to have it so I just pay. Four dollars for a Gatorade I could go for 50 cents in a pack of eight. Yeah. You're living for God that way. You're stumping at church like a 7-Eleven for a quick fix instead of letting God change your life at an altar. But that's why he came. Because he doesn't want you to stay Jacob. He wants you to become Israel. A living sacrifice. I don't go there. I don't do that no more. I don't have those addictions. I'm changing my way. I got tunnel vision for Jesus. Where are my elders believing God and leave some people that way? She's seated. I know I got to hurry up. This is not. This is not even fun. No. How many heard about that joker? I think his name, he's a rapper named Nas. Put out them shoes, got real human blood in called the 60s. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, Jesus wore sandals. Anyway. <laughs> So we really want to be like Jesus. I don't want to get on that subject because I'm getting in that car when I go out and get out of here today. I ain't walking nowhere. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You know why that's out there. Do you know why you've heard about that? Wait a minute. Wait. I talk about all the time. They advertise TV programs, new movies, this celebrity. They want you following them. They want you buying what they buy. You know why they pay stars that you know to advertise something? They want you to buy a product. Anybody want to know why Facebook's free? You're the merchandise. They're selling you. They're selling you. See, the whole world don't give a rip about your soul. Only Jesus does. And he knows what's best for you, and he loves you. That's why, even though sometimes, well, ain't no one going to tell me what to do. I'm going to tell you what, you know what, Jesus, I need you to. Because yeah. I got them telling me I need Reeboks. I got them telling me I need to drive this car. They got me, I need to buy that house. I need those clothes. My wife needs to look like that. My kids need to have school scores like that. I need to, I can't keep up with all that. Jesus, I want to submit my ways and you lead me. Every one of us has to make a definitive choice every day. Deuteronomy 30, it was an amazing statement made. That the Lord says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Here's the line of demarcation, folks. 
that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. It's multiple choice. You got two choices. But, he, but unlike those multiple choice, SATs we added, all those things, he gives you the answer. I needed it. Short, I'm, I'm off the, hello? Choose life that both thou and thy those following you. It may not always be fun to call up that child and say, man, you need to quit missing church, get your heart right with God. How can you be more attached to a person than God? That's foolish. What do you mean you can't afford to pay your tithes and give off? Really? You starving? You starving? Maybe it's time some parents need to take that pacifier out of that great big giant old baby and say, you know, it's time for you to grow up. Maybe we got some adults in here in prison. It's life, folks. You don't have to answer this. Because I know the answer because I'm just like you. Anybody still have old habits that try to keep up in your life? BC stuff. Because that all things become news a little slow for some of us, you know. Quick temper, sharp tongue, attitude, smart aleck, vices, addictions, habits. James is a great book. I suggest you all read it. It's really simple. Draw not nigh to God. Draw close to God and he will draw nigh close to you. And hear God. Well, maybe you need to put some things away and draw closer to him. But then, you know, he's kind of brutal. He kind of made it plain for people like me. Cleanse your hands. What are you doing? What are you involved in? What are you touching? <laughs> Bend your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We know that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know you're single-minded at church, but then we don't know what you're going to do on Friday. One writer said, my addiction and my faith went to war and my soul was the battlefield. You get struggling with those things, but you have to understand. But you have not so learned Christ, Ephesians 4, 20, 24. If, if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off, put off, put off, concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It matters what you watch. It matters what you listen to. It matches. It, it matters who you're talking to and speak. It's funny, I hear people come up with some of the craziest ideas. They didn't think of it. Someone spoke it. Where did Eve get the idea to go against what God said? Hello? Nothing new, folks. Just, and that you put on the new man, the new man, the new man. Hello, Jacob. Die. Is so Israel going to rise up? Which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. Anybody recognize that conflict? Anybody understand there's discipline to putting on Christ? It denotes a conscious effort. Hey, fellas, the first looks an accident, the second one's a choice. <laughs> right? Look, the effort declares the struggle. Yes. But it reveals a true desire to change. Jacob wrestled on. You have to wrestle until you get what you need. You got to fight that fight. That's right. Fight the good fight of faith. I got to. I got to get disciplined to change me. I, I got to quit going to bed at two o'clock in the morning and missing church because I. Hello. I got to turn some of that stuff off because I'm not hearing from God. I got to get some stuff out. It may not even be sin. I just needed to get out of my life because it encumbers between me and Jesus and I'm not where I should be. I got this amazing calling of God, but I can't control my lust. You have to wrestle until you get what you need in God. 
that what, what I'm gonna tell you something we miss in church today. People really get come, run into an altar and fighting that spiritual battle to be who you know you called to be because you know last night you fought and you ended up failing becoming who you used to be again. You're struggling with that same sin. That ain't nobody's fault. You, you just have lacked discipline. I, I was told one time back when I was a brand new convert, struggling with cigarettes, so they hey, there's a cure for cigarettes. Cancer. That hurt. That hurt. You'll stop. Trust me. Hello? Paul reveals this. He shows us the battle hasn't changed. Despite being the great apostle that wrote most of the New Testament, listen to what he says in Romans 7. For that which I do, I allow not. God, I'm doing what I don't believe in. For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Can we be honest today? I got sin in me. When people say, I know in my heart, no, you don't. You just lied. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. Who could know it? You tell me, oh, I know in my heart what I do. Ah, you just lie. No. Give it to God. He does know. Yeah. Your actions speak louder than your words. Can we be real today? That child comes in, you love that child to death, but you know full well he did exactly what you told him not to. He don't need you coddling him right then. He needs you getting in his face and say, hey, boy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You're leading down the wrong track. Now then, there's nobody to do it, but sin and dwelleth in me, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh. Listen, my old man dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform it that which is good, I find not. The struggle is not necessarily indicative of failure. Rather, it's proof that God is having an effect. Can we turn it? Anybody in a fight? Yeah. That means God's having an effect. The moment you relinquish and there's no more fight, there's no more struggle, you've probably already lost. There's got to be something about me. I'm getting to church because I need it. I got to put down all the distractions because I know the Bible says he chose by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You got you to quit acting like you got always something to say. Instead, you got something to learn. You got something to be taught. You got something to relinquish. That old man needs to die today that Israel can get up. The fight proves the victory still up for grabs. It's not a failure till you quit trying. It's not, a, it's not over unless you quit admitting that you're struggling. You can still win if you stay in the fight. In World War II, they could tell the prisoners that were going to do okay and the prisoners that weren't. Much like our story. In World War II, and especially in, in, in the Asian prison camps, they were so brutalized between the Bataan Death March and the starvation and all the other things going on. When they stopped getting out of bed, when they stopped getting up, when they stopped tending to things that just to make an assemblance of life, and instead they lose hope, they roll over, face the wall, and they die. You can always tell when people were getting ready to die, they just stopped trying. They relinquished themselves to a fate. So when we look at this dilemma in our text, I want you to notice something. And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, Paul was sick. He took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. You know what? It ain't over. There's some people following you. There's some people that matter that are watching you. And one told Jacob and said, Behold, thy son Joseph cometh unto thee. And Israel strengthened himself and sat up in the bed. There's two people in that bed. It's like there's two people in your seat. <laughs> Jacob's older. He's got a lifetime of mistakes. He's been wild. He's been crazy. He's been inconsiderate. He's been a deceiver. 
conniver, a wheeler dealer. If he's done those dirty deeds, they're cheap. He's a birthright bandit. He's a manipulator. He didn't care who he hurt. If it hit, thought it helped him. He didn't deserve the blessings or the birthright. He still took it. It wasn't rightfully his. But it ended up being his. And God let him. Look, you need to hear what I'm saying here, because this is ugly, but it's true. Like, whether you like Jacob or not, he always fought for what he wanted. The Bible talks about running like destroy water. Jacob's a scallywag. That's the scallywag. He's a family divider. A successful family divider. Any old scallywags in here? Any old sinners here today? Can I get an amen? From a scoundrel. Anybody got any darkness in your past? Well, let me ask this. You know, there's darkness in your past, but is there anybody here that has enjoyed the saving power of Jesus? I'm not yet where I want to be, but at least I'm not where I used to be. You're still a little edgy? You're still dealing with who you used to be? And your old self is hindering who you're supposed to be. And you really don't deserve the blessings of God. I never want to get here and get in church and sit in a seat and think that I deserve just to sit here and look at everybody else in need of God. And I think that I don't. That's a dangerous place, especially for preachers to get. Let me talk to the ministry for a minute. The day we come in here and we don't think we need to come up here unless we're going to pray for somebody else. Let me tell you something. You got a key? Get one. If not, you need to come up and find something. If you're a real minister in this church and you're not coming here on days off to come and pray, I, 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 how can I know you're good for their soul if I don't see you tending yours? Sad place. Most of us tend our cars and our gardens and our yards and our houses way more than our souls. But only one of them is going to help you get in heaven. Hello, ministry? Yeah. Leaders? Come on, team, youth team. I talked to Sunday school. Well, there's something in here. There's something in school. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm showing up in church late for prayer. And, oh, man, with my turn up there. He ain't coming. Because you're still doing stupid stuff. Anybody here still trying to get your head right? Anybody need the Holy Ghost to help you? Let me say, anybody here still need the Holy Ghost to help you? Five, five people. Carla, do you think there's any more in here to still get them wild thoughts? Anybody here taking stupid risks with your soul? Anybody here giving affection to old habits that have been hindering you for years? Skirting that edge a little bit, not being really honest. Oh, you look good, you act good, people think you're good, but deep down, if they really. Not the resume you submit, but the resume you hide. Some of you, kind of like Eve, you don't mind a snake slithering up and talking to you. Jacob's been frivolous, untrustworthy, unpredictable. That blows our minds. He's been manipulative. You know, he was wise enough 
to cool the spirit of Esau by sending him gifts that second time around. You realize? Esau could have, should have killed him, but you know what Jacob did? He sent another bride. He sent another bride. Look, at, listen, folks. You ain't, going, you ain't no one going to buy their way into heaven. You're going to have to start getting real with this thing. You can pull the wool over my eyes and some people's eyes. And, but God's not blind in, in any case at all. Mm. Some of you still got that. Yeah. But you see, because you're still messing with dumb stuff. You're not really taking church and God serious. It's it's cool on Sundays, but you know, I really want to table that when it comes to Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> right? Somehow there's something still in you. I hope there's someone here today that in you know what I want I want to break away from my old habits. I I want you know, if the prodigal can get a turnaround, I want that turnaround. If Jacob could get that turnaround, I want the turnaround. If the psalmist in Psalm 73 got that turnaround, anybody else want that escape today? If Peter denying Jesus got another chance, if David got another shot after Bathsheba and Samson was able to make it after Delilah, some of the greats got stupid stuff. Anybody here got stupid stuff? You want victory over? Come on, be all. Stop lying and be all. I, I want victory over it. I don't want to lie my way through it. I don't want to be a. I want to be honest with God and get my act fixed and get God to get me through this. Take this old Jacob and raise up an Israel. I don't want to be that guy no more. I don't want to be that person no more. Hey. I'm going to close. Years ago, sit down for a minute. There's another one of my dumb stories. Yes. And I, I think I've told it before, but it was, it was a life-changing moment for me. It was ridiculous. Has anybody ever played paintball before? Okay, well, this is back when, the, when it was just really getting popular. And uh, I loaded up my truck, and some other guys took their trucks. We loaded up all our paintball guns, and we went up to a place in Placerville, California. It was they call it Ice House or D5 if you're a hunter. It's D5 zone. And I got a flat on the way in at a valve stem. I had great big old tires on my four-wheel drive. Had a valve stem out. Came out of it looked like a tree trunk. Big old tires. Dumb. Well, not that. Well, limb caught it and ripped it off. Flat tire out. So I had to put this dumb, ridiculous spare on there. And my driving down the road like this. Going, ah, get it fixed. Got it fixed and I was coming back. It was coming back. I got to thinking about this today. I don't remember what my intentions were, but they were probably not good. So I'm coming back to camp, but I got my buddy Matt with me, Matthew, a different Matthew. I had a, in fact, I, he's, he goes to the Rock Church in Sacramento. And uh, we're heading back. And I said, come on, let's sneak in. And this is I'm like, I don't know if I was intending to shoot him or what I was intending to do. But let's sneak up. I'm not thinking that, you know what, they're going to hear that dumb truck from a mile away. I'm not going to really... So then we parked the truck, got out, and go to sneaking in the camp. And I'm I'm belly crawling. I, I took it serious, man. I, I mean, come on, you gotta understand something. You know, Vietnam was very real with me growing up. You know, all of a sudden, yeah, I'm in the desert jungle and there'd be a con over there in that, and I'm fixing it, you know. So I'm ready and I'm I'm belly crawling like this. And that's I hear to my right, and I'm going, and I look, I know we're really close, and I look, and I got a tree right here, and all of a sudden there's this splat. I look over, and paintball paint's dripping right down an inch from my face. In the words of Brother Downport, y'all not have done that. I saw that, and I realized, 
Oh, ho, ho, ho. you're shooting at me? You're, you have to understand my past. I've been shot at before. All of a sudden, something snapped. And I went full Rambo. I mean, you probably don't even know who that is, but I, I'm sorry, man. I, I jumped up, and I just started charging in, and I just started... Next thing I know, everybody in the camp's just running out into the woods and one by one. Man, this is back, I can't run to save my life now, but back then, I mean, I get Jesse Owens to run for his money back then. I'm running, and I'm just picking them off. Bam, bam, bam. And I remember I'm running up on Bill Menser. And he looks, old, looks and he's kind of round. So he won't go get far. Love him. Good friend of mine. He turns around and looking. Right when he turns, I'm going, bam. And I... I it hit him in the chin and just kind of peeled that skin like this. And I, all of a sudden, they start screaming, Steve, stop! It's only a game! They're running for their lives, and I'm just bang, 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 bang. I killed everybody. They still won't come out. And they're yelling, it's only a game! Those calls wake you up to reality. Those calls wake you up to the reality of what's at stake. Something snapped. That was too close for me. You almost lost your family. You could have lost your life. Could have cost you your soul. Those calls change your perspective. Close calls eliminate playing around. Yes. When you realize where you could be and you find yourself with the opportunity to start being who you should have been. Jacob recognized what was going on when his son was bringing his grandchildren. I don't want my grandbabies to meet Jacob. I don't want my pass on Jacob to these babies. I don't want my son and my grandbabies to follow a Jacob. And Jacob was laying in the bed dying. But something stirred up in him. And the Bible very clearly states, and Israel strengthened himself. Set up in the bed. Old man died to do, oh, no, 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 my grandbabies, my baby. They're going to meet that new, they're going to meet that new man. I'm not going to be the old me. I'm going to be the new me. Let's all stand. You don't have to be the old you. God's given you a door of opportunity to the new you. You can turn things around. Are you hearing me? It's easy to contemplate quitting when you're faced with the struggle or dying when life is looked at from the perspective of fear rather than faith. You know, you can read all the books, listen to all the conferences, quote scripture the devil does Jacob's seen it all he's done it all he's guilty he's learned some stuff he survived a lot he's at the point where he thinks it's just okay to die to surrender maybe I should just surrender with who I've been surrender to all the battles I fight every day He's ready to lay down and die. He's ready to quit. 
But I believe there's someone listening right now that you're tired of being an old Jacob. And there's a Savior calling you to sit up and stand up and be an Israel. And I believe deep inside every one of us, there's that element of us that's secretly wanting to stand up and be the child of God you were always meant to be. I understand there's a spiritual battle, but I'm not finished yet. I'm going to stand up. I'm ready to fight like never before. I need to strengthen myself in the things of God. I need to start praying like I've never prayed. I need to start listening like I've never listened before. I need to worship like I'm not ready to die. I want to strengthen myself. I'm not ready to surrender. I want to strengthen myself. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye might may be able to withstand in the evil way and having done all to stand. I'm here to tell someone, get up. That's what Easter's for. Get up. Get up and walk in newness of life. Uh, Leave Jacob down and let Israel stand up. You see, this represents the same of us. Jacob's our first birth. Israel is our second Israel is referring to his changed self. You see, 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 wait a minute. Was I, when I was in the world, I didn't have to fight. I didn't fight anything. I just did everything. Man, it's always a fight in church. Yes, because I haven't surrendered. In the world, I did, I did the drugs. I did everything. You know why? I was lost. You see, the battle isn't the problem. The giving up is. Stay in the fight. Get on the front row of faith. I wonder if as Jacob laid there, he was ready to make a deal with death. Struggling, you're, you're just thinking about making a deal with that. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm just not called. And something happened when he realized that the future was going to come walking into my bedroom, and I don't want them to meet Jacob. I don't, I don't, I don't want my children. I don't want my, my grandbabies. I don't want my great grandbabies. I don't want to pass on Jacob. I want to pass on him. Both mindsets are in the same place, in the same bed, lying down. Thank God you see Israel that sat up and stood up that wants to get up. Don't give up. Instead, get up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 